What is up bros and brouettes, I am Ink Slasher, and today I'm going to be, I guess, remaking a video that I made back in 2014. Over two years ago, I made almost this exact same video, but back in Call of Duty Ghost. Now, this video is going to be talking about five things that you can get that will actually make you a better Call of Duty player. So, there's a lot of things you can do that will actually make you better at Call of Duty. Practice your aim, practice your map knowledge, a ton, a ton of things. But sometimes, grinding can only get you so far. There's certain things that you can actually buy and get that will actually just simply make you a better Call of Duty player with just the flick of a switch, basically. So what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to go in order of things that will help you the least to the thing that will help you the most in that order. So the number one thing will be the number one thing that is going to help you the most be a better Call of Duty player. So coming in at number five, we have the only thing that you don't necessarily need to buy on this list, and this is where you sit. Now, where I sit is at a desk, because I could record most of my gameplay for almost every single game. So I sit at a desk in a computer chair, and I would say that's probably one of the best case scenarios for where you can sit while playing Call of Duty. However, a lot of people play sitting on a couch, which is fine, but the couple things that you want to manage when you're deciding where to sit is, first of all, how far away do you want to be from your TV? I love being nice and up close to the TV that I'm playing on. Not everyone loves that, and in fact, it's actually pretty bad for your eyes, but fuck science, am I right? Fuck you, science! But in all seriousness, it does matter where you sit, and it's 100% personal preference. Like I said, I prefer to sit closer rather than further. Also, sitting up at like a 90 degree angle parallel to the TV is incredibly, incredibly important. It's going to give you the best field of view for your own vision and make it so it's a little bit better. You're going to notice as soon as you lay down playing Call of Duty, you're almost immediately going to start playing worse. And if you don't believe me and you're a player who normally plays laying down... Just try sitting up. It's going to improve your game a lot. Now, for this, technically, you don't need to buy anything, but a computer chair is always good if you're sitting at a computer. But this can be as cheap as, well, free. All you got to do is sit up and pay attention to the screen, and you're already improving your game. Now, up next at number four, we're going from the cheapest thing we've looked at to by far the most expensive thing on this list. Now, this is a monitor or TV, whatever you play on, and this is actually incredibly important and incredibly underrated by so many players. Now, most players just assume that if you're playing at 1080p, you're at the same advantage as every other person you're playing with, when that is 100% not true in the slightest. For the most part, there is two stats that you need to be really good on your TV. First of all, your brightness and contrast and color ratios need to be good, but for the most part, that's not going to change too much into how you play. The most important stat on a TV is the refresh rate. Now, if you don't know what a refresh rate is on a TV... Basically, in layman's terms, it's the amount of time it takes for all the pixels on your TV to actually refresh and you to see a new picture. This is obviously very, very important when playing video games because it's going to give you a faster response time, which is going to in turn make you kill people faster, which is always good when playing Call of Duty. And this will be good for actually playing any video game. Now, where you want to be looking is I've seen TVs and gaming monitors ranging from anywhere from one millisecond refresh rate to over 25 milliseconds refresh rate. Now, those numbers seem incredibly small and seem like they wouldn't make a difference but boy do they ever you got to remember when we're talking about time to kills we can be talking about numbers as low as 0 0.0025 milliseconds and that's making a difference in games so one milliseconds to 25 milliseconds going to be making a big big deal when you're playing any sh first person shooter game and even in other games as well so as far as what to buy, I don't really have a strong recommendation on this one. If you want your best bang for your buck, you probably want to look at BenQ gaming monitors. They're going to range anywhere from around $200 to $700, depending on how good you want. Obviously, the more you pay, the larger screen you're going to get and the better quality you're going to get, but around $300 to $700 for those. Now, the one stat, like I said earlier, you want to be looking at is for that one millisecond refresh rate, which all of those in that range are going to have. Other than that, you can look at more expensive ones. They're going to be larger. You can get some ultra-wide monitors as well with good refresh rates, but for those, you're looking at upwards of $1,000. So that's just depending on what price you want to pay and what you're going to be getting for it. You're just going to have to do some shopping around, but if you want to start somewhere, I would suggest the BenQ gaming monitors. By the way, not sponsored by BenQ whatsoever. I just know a lot of pro players use their products, but BenQ... 
if you want to hook a brother up, I'm not opposed. Coming in at number three is probably one you've heard people talk about before, and that's a gaming headset. Now, this one takes a little bit of skill to use, I'm not going to lie, but sound horning has been a big thing in Call of Duty for a very long time now. Obviously, in Black Ops 3, with there being perks like Dead Silence and Awareness and even Blast Suppressor, you're able to hear the enemy's movements, and it's obviously an advantage if you can be hearing these movements. So, by game getting a gaming headset and then using Dead Silence and Awareness, you're going to be giving yourself an advantage over your enemies that aren't doing so. So honestly, this is one of those things that's almost a must in gaming these days, especially if you're going to be playing game modes like Search and Destroy or playing any sort of competitive Call of Duty whatsoever. A gaming headset is 100% a must. So as far as what headset to get, it's going to depend heavily on how much you have to spend. So for example, the difference between a $50 headset and a $100 headset is absolutely massive. The difference between a $100 and $200 is a little bit, and the difference between a one, uh, $200 to $300 is very, very very little. Um, just the more you spend, it's going to get a little bit better the more and more you spend. However, at first there's going to be a massive difference. So you're definitely going to be wanting to look at least around $100. Now, when looking for a headset, the main thing you want to be looking for is either 5.1 or 7.1 surround sound. Those are going to make it easier for you to sound whore because the more speakers there are in your headphones, the easier it is for you to hear where people are. So as far as what headset to get, it depends how much you want to pay. By the way, I'm not sponsored by any headset company. But uh, as far as what headset I use, I use Astro A40s. They're really expensive. You're looking at upwards of $250, depending on where you live. I live in Canada, so it costs me $350, so they're expensive. And you get good bang for your buck. They're incredibly solid. They're hard to break. I've sat on them many times and no problems with them whatsoever. Even the wires themselves are very, very good. Now, like I said, they're expensive, and if you're looking for something cheaper, my best suggestion is actually the PlayStation headset. Now, I don't think it works with Xbox, but it works on PC and PS4 and PS4. PS3, it's a Bluetooth headset, it's 7.1 surround sound, and it's $100 or cheaper depending on where you live, which is incredibly, incredibly cheap for what you're getting. Trust me, the sound on this thing is incredibly good. I have two of them, both of which are from before I got my Astro headset. They're really, really good and definitely something worth checking out if you're a PlayStation user. So as far as number one and number two go on this list, they are items that are going to make you a better player very, very quickly. And number two is a scuff controller. Now what a scuff controller allows you to do is it has two buttons or up to four buttons added on the back of a controller and it allows you to kind of access those buttons without having to take your thumbs off the actual joystick. What this allows you to do is the main thing it allows you to do is aim, jump, and shoot all at the same time. This is incredibly, incredibly important, especially when they add more and more advanced movement in. Obviously in Black Ops 3 and Advanced Warfare, it's incredibly important to be jetpacking, boosting around while you're aiming and shooting and because of that, it's that much more important to have one of these controllers. Now, there is a way around this. The way around this is you got to play Claw. Now, there are several pro players who actually do play Claw. One of them is Optic Scump. He's done the Claw Cam before. And the Claw basically looks like this. And it allows you to, again, aim, jump, and shoot all at the same time. But it's very uncomfortable and very hard to get used to. So, if you have the money, this is definitely something you want to invest your money in is a scuff controller. If you don't have the money, um, then try learning Claw. It's very difficult, though, until you get a hang of it. Once you get a hang of it, it's super easy, but super difficult to get started with. So coming in at number one, we've got something I'm actually sponsored by. And I'm not putting them at number one because I'm sponsored by them. I'm actually putting them at number one because they're the cheapest and the easiest way to improve your kill-death ratio. And it is Control Freaks. Now, I actually approached them for the sponsorship. They didn't approach me. And trust me, these are the easiest way to raise your kill-death ratio. Now, this is my first time announcing this sponsorship. So if you guys would like to buy some Control Freaks, I'll leave a link down in the description. Also, if you put the coupon code INK, I -N -K, in at checkout, you will get 10% off your purchase, and it also helps me out a little bit. Also, if you tweet me showing me that you use my coupon code, of course, I will give it a retweet or like it or at least respond to you or something like that, uh, but that'd be really, really cool if you could show me. I'm just more interested than anything, but these are by far the easiest way to raise your kill-death ratio, and trust me, I am not saying that because I'm sponsored by them. I have used these things back since Modern Warfare 2. By the way, I'm not going to be putting the coupon code at the beginning of all my videos. I know that's super annoying. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to put you guys through that. 
just the coupon codes in the description. It always will be. So if you ever want to buy some, that's the place to look. But besides that, how did I find out about these control freaks? It was back in Modern Warfare 2. And I would go over to my buddy's house after school. This was before YouTube. I didn't know about all this YouTube stuff. But my buddy, he was the best Call of Duty player I've ever known. To date, he was unbelievable. He could get nukes on command. I remember sitting in a game with him. I was getting pissed off at the other team. I'm like, come on, man. You just you get, go get a nuke. These guys are pissing me off. He's like... All right, just give me a second. 45 seconds later, he's like, yeah, I got the nuke. Do you want me to use it? I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? Of course I want you to. It was unbelievable. I remember sitting down and in one sitting, 25 nukes. It was a matter of like three hours. He had 25 nukes. I'm like, how is that even possible? He was unbelievably good. And he was using these control freaks one day. I'm like, what the hell are you using? So he explained to me what they are. And I called bullshit. I said they didn't work. I tried them. And within two to three games, I was immediately having better aim. It's unbelievable how well these things work. And basically what they do is they extend your thumbstick so that you can have more movement and more control over your movement by also having a higher sensitivity. So since you have a longer thumbstick, you can turn up your sensitivity and still have the exact same amount of control over your aim you did before. It's an incredibly, incredibly elegant solution to something that you didn't think was a problem. It is fantastic and it immediately, almost immediately improves you as a player. And it's so cheap. Like one of them can be like 10 bucks. Like if you don't have much money and you want to get something that's going to improve you as a Call of Duty player, this is the one item to get just because it's so damn cheap. And like I said, if you use the coupon code INC, you get 10% off. So that'll help you out a little bit too. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, it'd be fantastic. You leave a like rating. It really does help with the channel. Also, if you're new to the channel, it'd be amazing if you could hit that subscribe button. Also my Twitter, Twitch, and also second channel links are down in the description. And of course the control freak link as well. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace out. I can fly.